Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of CBT Now, right here at the CBT Automotive Network. New data from Urban Science's quarterly electric vehicle retail sales report is offering insights into the industry's growth. Joining us today to break down the numbers from the report is uh, Tom Condrit, who you've seen here before on CBT News. He is the global lead for advanced analytics at Urban Science. Thank you so much, Tom, for joining us today. Thanks, Jim. Glad to be back. Sure. So uh, to set the stage, uh, tell our viewers about this inaugural study and why Urban Science decided to conduct it. So uh, back in May, we had a, a major media event and we uh, released our EV micro study mm -hmm. and the demand was overwhelming that we should update it quarterly. Mm -hmm. So going forward, we will produce a quarterly update um, within probably about two weeks of every quarter close going forward. Okay. And we'll focus on the auto industry, sales numbers, EVs uh, in particular will be focused in this study. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great, that's great. Can you give us a breakdown of how sales are faring for different types of electric vehicles like BEVs and plug-in hybrids and hybrids? And Absolutely. So um, the industry is pretty flat compared to last year. Last year was a good year. Um, okay. We're just down about a little, about half a point from an industry standpoint. Um, but when we look at EVs and hybrids, uh, from a retail standpoint, uh, EVs and hybrids are up uh, very considerably uh, so far through this year. So about 16% growth mm -hmm. through this year so far. So they're very much outpacing the industry and um, we expect that to continue. Okay, and what if you break out just EVs and not hybrids or plug-in hybrids? What, what does that look like? Right, so if you just look at battery electrics, um, battery electrics are up 12% uh, um, so far this year uh, in the third quarter. Um, they've accelerated significantly. You know, in the first quarter, they were only up a, a point or two. Okay. And there was a lot of uh, transition. You had, um, you know, changes to the IRA uh, rebates and which mm -hmm. models were included. And so that created some uncertainty. But since then, um, EV sales have picked up. And so the, the, the narrative, for the most part, has been a lack of demand. And really what's going on, in, in my view, is that you've got supply and demand are realigning. And you know, automakers are making shifts in their product strategy, and uh, there's ins new incentives coming out. Sometimes, um, you know, that makes a, a big impact, as we saw with Teslas mm -hmm. uh, uh, recently. So, you know, incentives play a role. New products are playing a role. But overall, the industry for battery electrics is up pretty considerably through the third quarter this year. Okay, and so that's good news. I mean, that's good news for dealers that are thinking that consumers don't want EVs and uh, maybe if they, they don't want them at the rate that the OEMs think they want them, right? But with sales being up like that, uh, that's good news for the industry, right? Yeah, I think that um, this is going to happen um, slowly, probably slower than um, some of the manufacturers would like to see with all sure. of their major investments. But generally what we're seeing is realignment to the market demand. We're seeing more hybrids being launched, uh, announced. We're seeing more plug-in hybrids being announced. Mm -hmm. um, extended range, I think over the next year or two, you're going to see a lot more extended range EVs, and that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, such as the Ram. Sure. Um, so that, that'll be a, a, a more of a product platform than we've seen in the past. So um, this is all uh, par for the course in the auto industry. There's products that are launched and then the market reacts, and then uh, everybody plays catch up to that. That's right, that's right. Now, California, Florida, Texas, New York, New Jersey are leading the nation in EV sales. What, what makes these states such strong markets for electric vehicle adoption? Right, so California stands apart mm -hmm. um, from, from all their investment in infrastructure, from all their um, you know, carb, um, kind of regulatory side. Sure. And then also up until uh, last year, they had a very generous state incentive. Well, that state incentive has backed off. And so you're just left with basically the national incentive. Okay. And um, e battery electric sales in California this year are flat, actually. Mm. And California is very interesting because Tesla has been over 60% market share since the beginning. Wow. 
and we're seeing them lose market share this year. Ah, okay. So whether it's, um, you know, Elon's politics or it's just there's more diversity. <laughs> That's right. I didn't the... think about that. That could have a ripple <laughs> effect, right? Yeah, in San Francisco, uh, Tesla sales are down pretty considerably, um, but they've shifted to hybrids there. So this year, you know, combination of things, it's it's rarely ever just one thing yeah. that you know, dictates the market, right? Sure. You've got the, the state incentive uh, backing off there. Um, so hybrids have really picked up very considerably in the San Francisco market. Mm -hmm. And San Francisco is over 50% EV. Yeah. So wow. when we talk about the future of the country, you know, San Francisco's on the leading edge uh, from a battery electric or hybrid electric standpoint. Interesting. So, so yeah, so California sales overall for battery electrics are flat, mm -hmm. but hybrids have picked way up. So California's one very distinct story. Yeah. Um, the, the other interesting story is uh, when you talk about the South, uh, Florida, Texas, even your state, uh, home state of Georgia, mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing considerable battery electric growth this year. Mm. And really most of those states don't have any state incentives. Right. But Cal I'm sorry, Florida battery electric sales are up over 30% this year. Wow. And so they've jumped up, they, they're far past Texas now for the number two state in the country for battery electric sales. And they have no statewide incentives. They have no you know statewide um, regulatory uh, you know, mandates. So talk about pure demand. Uh, Florida is a gr really great example of organic demand, um, you know, socially driven adoption uh, in the state of Florida. So, uh, so yeah, it's a combination of factors, but we had predicted at the beginning of the year, if you go back and look at the tape, as they say, uh, we predicted Florida, especially Southern Florida as being the major growth market for this year, and so far that's panned out. Um, wow, along that's, the line. that's great. Very diverse area. I mean, you've got people from all over the country, all over the world for that matter, when you factor in Dade County and Miami and what have you, so maybe that's got something to do with it as well. Is the infrastructure, do you happen to know if the infrastructure is stronger for EVs in South Florida than anywhere else in the country? Is that something they've made a commitment on? Um, there, there's, there's decent battery infrastructure, charging infrastructure, but there needs to be more yeah. really through most of the country, I mean, uh, arguably, uh, except for California, yeah. certain, certain areas of California, but um, really there's more infrastructure needed everywhere yeah. to sustain and to grow. So no, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that's the primary driving factor in Florida as an infrastructure uh, situation. Um, typically with early adopters, say the first 15% or so of, uh, of any population, you know, you look at social sciences, you look at that kind of research, about 15% of people are early adopters. Okay. Whether it's, you know, cell phones or other new technology, whatever. Yeah. Um, those people, early adopters, don't need infrastructure to kind of make the leap. Yeah. So what, what I think will happen is in places like Florida, Texas, Georgia, you know, you won't see resistance to a lack of infrastructure up to, say, you know, 15 percent or so approximately. Right. But after that, there'll need to be continued investment to continue to grow past 15 percent sure. because convenience. And I was I recently published an auto news article and I focused on convenience because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, convenience is still uh, paramount. Um, yes. You know, customer convenience, having convenience when you charge convenient charging at home is all part of the equation. Yeah, no question about it. And we're going to put a link right beneath this video that you're watching uh, to Tom's article at Automotive News. So I highly recommend everybody reads that. Hey, any surprises that jumped out at you on this report? Um, really, I think um, one, here's one interesting tidbit is that um, when we talk about all EVs, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, mm -hmm. and battery electric, so you combine all those together, right. we're, we're going to hit 2 million sales for this year in wow. the month of October. Nice. This is headed in the right direction, right? It's headed in the right direction. It's up about three and a half points. So wow. market share points were at about 22% of so all sales are some kind of electrified platform, and that's up three and a half points over last year. That's something. So, hey, dealers, you, you heard that. <laughs> that's very encouraging. I mean, you're talking about two million vehicles out there of some sort, battery-operated um, 
uh, or battery operated, but I mean, you know, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, BEVs out there and the EVs and such, but that's good news in the industry because I think there's a lot of dealers out there that just think, oh, can't sell an EV, nobody wants them. And I'm sure in some of maybe the flyover states or what have you, that may be the case. I talk to dealers all over the, all over the country and there are, you know, different pockets, as we were just talking about, that do way better with EVs than others. But uh, but by and large, that's that's an impressive number, right? Yes, I, I think so. I think, you know, part of the message that I've tried to convey this year is be because I hear from dealers, too, that, yeah. they're, you know, they don't see the demand that yeah. the OEMs see, um, is that there's pockets everywhere. Right. You know, right. Whether it's, uh, you know, um, any city across the country, you know, Atlanta, Nashville, yep you know, uh, New Jersey, you know, and, and all these places across the country, there are pockets. And yeah. so we offer tools, whether it's market view or whether it's our in-market audiences, we've built optimized EV targeting models for digital targeting, direct targeting email to touch and communicate to every consumer in every dealership's market across the country. And so I, I would just encourage dealers to continue to try to find those yeah. pockets um, and they're there for sure. And yeah, and, and urban science has got the uh, got the solution. So that that's fantastic. I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Tom Condrit, global global lead for advanced analytics at urban science. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. This is always great to catch up with you. You always bring the goods. So we very much appreciate it and uh, look forward to next time. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. Thanks.